I thought I would do a short video demonstration of this um, level crossing control module that I bought a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's from the block signalling range of um, accessories, uh, model railway accessories. Um, this is the LCS4 level crossing control module. This is the newest one that they do. This one comes pre-programmed with 18 sounds, uh, different level crossing type sounds. Um, and you also get the speaker included with it as well. There's two other versions of lateral crossing controller from Block Signal, and uh, there's the LCS1 and the LCS2. Uh, but I believe this particular module is the only one with sound. Uh, as I say, it comes with 18, 17 or 18 different sounds um, of level crossings from different countries, um, which include France, Italy, Germany, Japan. Finland and I'm not sure if there's another couple on there the United States is on there and obviously the UK is on there as well which mine set up to um, to uh, play the sound of the UK level crossings there's three particular sounds for the UK level crossings firstly you get the um, the yodel alarm which this module is set to play which I'll let you hear that very soon uh, and the other two are bell type alerts which I think um, were the alerts that was used with the uh, the full size level crossings when they were introduced I, I'm not sure when it was whether it was back in the late 1970s or early 1980s I think I believe they used the uh, the bell type alerts on those um, but as I say this particular one's got the uh, yodel alarm programmed to to play the nice thing about this is is that um, all the different parameters within the module is uh, fully programmable. I don't know if you can just about make out that little black push button switch there. Um, and there's also this little red LED there. You program your, um, the, the parameters is programmed by the certain depression, certain amount of presses of the, the button um, and flashes of the LED to set the parameters that you may want to change. Um, the uh, the flash time of the lights is fully adjustable. The uh, the amber light time that comes on, you can change how long that's on for. The um, the flash time of the red lights, how long that on, how long that off, and uh, various other bits and pieces you can do. Um, quite simply, as I say, just by pressing the button and watching the uh, the flashes of the LED. Of course, all the um, programming is uh, explained in the uh, the instructions that you get with the module so it, it's not difficult to do once you get the hang of doing it there's about four or five different ways of um, activating the module um, I'm just trying to reach this here without getting my hand too much in the way when you first get the module it, it comes fitted with this um, infrared sensor which you can see here in front of the camera um, obviously that would go between your rails and the, uh, the infrared sensor would uh, pick up the shadow of the logo passing over and reflect the light back or however it works and then activate the module the other way is that you can activate the module which is what I've d decided to do is uh, with a push button switch here what I intend to do when the layout's finished and the crossing's placed on the layout I want to um, place this on a, a sort of a mimic track diagram close to where the the, uh, the crossing would be and activate the crossing from the switch here the other methods of activation are uh, you can use a read switch you can use a, a push button switch. This is a, this is a push button latching switch, which I'll come back to in a minute. Um, you can, uh, and I think you can use a halt sensor as well. I'm not too sure about that. Um, the reason why I've decided to use a latching switch is because I wanted the red lights to continue showing after the sound has stopped playing. What happens is when you activate the module, the sound plays for 10 seconds and then stops automatically. If you use any other kind of a switch other than a latching switch, the lights also go off after the 10 second sound finishes as well. But I wanted the lights to continue to show after the sound stops, so to simulate another train coming after, say, the first train had passed. Um, as on the full size crossings, the lights continue to show if there's another train coming, which is, as I say, which is what I wanted to do, which is the only way to do it. You have to use a latching switch, such as this here. If I uh, move the camera up to the crossing and just let you have a quick look, it's just a normal um, bog standard double O gauge Hornby double track level crossing as you can see, there's nothing special about it. Um, I've got a fair bit of work to do on this before the uh, the crossing's placed on the layout, that's when the layout gets started that is. Um, 
a couple of the things that I want to do is I want to get rid of these yellow sort of like grid markings that's on the, the road surface of the level crossing. Uh, I want to do away with those. I believe that uh, pretty much now the uh, all the crossings are just a, a plain grey boring concrete type of affair between the rails which is what I want to do with maybe um, a road marking of some kind up the centre just to uh, separate the two the two carriageways. Um, the LEDs that I used, I'll just try and zoom in on one of the lamp heads without going too much out of focus. I'll just take it in slowly. Um, the LEDs that I used were um, 1.8 sub-miniature LEDs, 1.8mm uh, sub-miniature diffused LEDs. I did want to try and fit 3mm LEDs into the uh, the holes once so I drilled out, but um, that proved just it just proved to be too difficult to do that. What was happening was the 3mm drill bit was just basically tearing into the lamp heads and it was making a, um, a complete mess of them. Luckily I had a few lamp heads lying around so I was just able to substitute it for another one and just use um, the 1.8mm LEDs. What I did was to start off with was to open the holes out first of all with a 1mm drill bit and a pin vise and then change that to a 2mm drill bit uh, to finish the holes off. Um, the other side's just the same there, I'll just flick across to that side, let you have a look at that side. Um, and simply just a, a little dab of super glue just to glue the LEDs in place. Uh, what I wanted to try and do was, I, want, I really wanted to try and hide the cabling from the back of the um, the lamp heads, which I think I've managed to do quite successfully. The wire that I used was um, Kynar wire, which you can see coming out the bottom there um, on both sides, which just goes through a hole in the level crossing, and then it'll just eventually go down through the baseboards and connect up to the module. Um, as I say, I used Kynar wire, and I was, I was quite... Uh, I wanted to sort of hide that as best I could. I was going to cut the poles off and put my own poles on, um, styrene tube poles, and run the wires down through the tubes. But the tube that I had um, was just way too big. It was totally oversized compared to the rest of the... It would have just looked totally out of place. So I thought, well, what I'll do is, um, when I get the crossing, you know, when I get the... Um, the lamp heads wired up and check the wiring and everything I'll just glue the um, the cable down the back of the pole with just a couple of dots of super glue um, down the back there and then I painted the cables white uh, sorry grey when I painted the poles grey I believe the poles are grey as well on yeah, UK crossings so I thought well that'll help to disguise the wires which I think it has I mean I'll try and zoom in a little bit more and I, I don't really think there's any wires visible uh, from behind the pole the other side was a lot easier to do um, because the uh, obviously the wires when they come out from the back of the lamp head just go down the back of this um, bracket stroke arm here for supporting the lamp head and then down the back of the uh, what would be the motor unit for the barrier and then out the bottom there. Um, so that, that's, that was pretty much the installation side of it which as I say it wasn't too bad. Um, getting the, the LEDs wired up was a, it was a little bit fiddly because I didn't want to sold the LEDs. I've sold the LEDs before in the past and ruined them. So I thought, well, I'm just going to um, I'm just going to wrap the wire around the legs of the LEDs and just put a little bit of heat shrink tubing over the top just to keep them, you know, separated from each other. The positive and negatives, or uh, anode and cathode, as the correct terms are, but it's positive and negative to me anyway. Um, each LED requires a resistor. Um, the thousand ohm resistors for each LED. I'm not sure if you could, sort with, the, with the red LEDs, if you could just use one um, a, a resistor per pair of LEDs because strictly speaking they're not both on at the same time so you might be able to get away with just um, one LED for these reds and an LED for those reds there as well. I, I don't know but I just decided to play it safe and um, wire up an LED to each uh, sorry, a resistor up to each LED, and then I knew they'll be fine. There wouldn't have been any problems. As I say, there were thousand ohm uh, resistors which I had lying around. Um, I'm just trying to think if there was anything else I wanted to tell you just before I give you a demonstration of the the uh, the sound. Um, I don't think so. I think that's pretty much it. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to mention to you is the um, the infrared sensor, which um, I showed you before. As you can see, this has got four legs on the back. It comes supplied. It's already fitted um, to the the control module when you when you buy them, um, and it it fits into these four terminals here. That I'm just pointing to with a screwdriver there. The, these four terminals there, the um, 
the legs of the uh, the infrared sensor just fix into those and just screw down. You need this piece of link wire in if you're not using the infrared sensor to do any programming. Um, this just fits in the first two terminals on the end there. You must have that otherwise you can't do any programming at all of any of the parameters. It just it simply won't work. The input voltage you can see the red red and black cable here coming in. It's a 12 volt DC input. Um, I think you can. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if you can use AC volts. I, I, I don't know. I would have to have to check on that. But um, I'm using it. Uh, it's, it's a 12 volt input supply anyway. DC. I'm actually running mine off a 13.8 volt regulated DC supply. So it, it, it's working fine off that. I haven't had any problems with it. Right. I'll give you a demonstration of the sound um, and let you have a look at the lights flashing as well. I think the um, the lights, the way the lights flash on this particular crossing module, is spot on. I've seen. Um, other ones that don't look anywhere near as good as this one um, but uh, I'll set it away anyway and let you see what you think so I'll, I'll press the button and the sound will play for 10 seconds and then it'll stop it's quite loud As you can hear, the sound stopped, but the lights is continuing to show. Um, as I said, you need a latching type switch in order for it to be able to make the lights continue to flash. And they'll just flash away until I switch the switch again, and then um, which I'll do now. And then um, a couple of seconds after that, the lights should go off, hopefully. There, that's the lights off there now. So um, that's that's pretty much all I can show you on this for now. Um, I was quite excited to get this and do a, a, a video on it because it's uh, it's sort of nice to play around with it. Um, you'll have to excuse the uh, the mess, the untidy wire in there, and the way the resistors is connected up to the module there. Um, it, it's as I say, it's just for purely demonstration purposes. Um, obviously, when it's sighted on the layout, when the layout gets finished and I put the crossing down, it'll all be wired up correctly and safely. So um, I hope you've enjoyed the video anyway and I'll, uh, I'll speak to you soon. So thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye.